I get asked for recommendations all the time for people looking to step up their paddles, but they want to keep it affordable and they don't want to get into really deep prices. My first review for paddles in the really affordable range is the Monger Pickleball Paddle. The nice thing about the Monger is it's carbon fiber and even without sales or discount codes, prices are starting in the 70s. But what I really wanted to know is could a paddle at this price still perform? Let's start with some paddle specifications. The Monger paddles are made with T700 Toray carbon fiber and they have a paddle face of 16 and a half by seven and a half inches. The handle's five inches long and they have two versions for thickness. They've got the 13 millimeter power and the 16 millimeter control. They also have their own weights depending on the thickness. The 13 millimeters are 7.6 to 7.9 ounces. The 16 millimeters are a little more heavy with the added material. 7.9 to 8.3 ounces. Prices are listed on the website starting at $79. You can use the 10% off code PBMED. Then I'll knock another chunk down to $71. Also include a direct link in the description. They'll have that discount already applied for you. You can just click it and go to the website and you already have that chunk off. Munger offers a 15 day satisfaction guarantee return policy. They have a limited six month warranty. The details of which are outlined on the website. Picking up and feeling the 13 millimeter version of the Monger, it uh, felt really maneuverable, felt decently light. Um, the 16 millimeter version felt just a little bit more heavy. Um, I wouldn't say it was anywhere near the most head heavy paddle that I've ever felt, um, but it was certainly a little bit more head heavy than the 13 millimeter version. I ran both these versions of the paddle through swing and twist weight tests. Uh, here's a little image I got from Google, I believe came from an article from Pickleball Central originally. I'll put a little link to that article here. Um, talks a little bit more about swing and twist weight if you wanted to learn more. Testing showed the swing weight of the 13 millimeter come back at 116, uh, which is about middle of the road. It's about the same as the Volair Mach 1 Forza, so felt pretty good in my hands. The 16 millimeter came in at 120 and on the 13 millimeter I ended up adding a few grams of lead tape up at the head of the paddle. This took the swing weight from 116 to 121 which I felt helped give me more power and add a little bit more spin. After running twist weight tests with paddles in the machine and then accounting for the machine emptying with the phone, the 13 millimeter came to 5.72 and the 16 millimeter came to 6.2. I took off the handle grip to inspect a little further and you can see that they've got some foam edge tape to cover any potentially exposed polymer and taking off the handle insert you can see that the paddle face and the handle are made with one piece as opposed to two separate pieces. As far as how the paddle feels when you actually hit the ball it's probably about what you'd expect after feeling the paddle face just with your bare hand. On the soft to firm feeling spectrum it's definitely more on the firm side. In terms of touch and control, I felt pretty good about how the paddle felt. I think that it had about average pop, um, so I was never really feeling in danger that the paddle was going to get away from me. So I felt pretty confident dropping the ball and I felt pretty confident dinking at the net. I also felt pretty good with one-handed and two-handed resets with the monger. Like I said before, it doesn't have a ton of pop, so I felt like I could dig my way out of some holes and reset the ball pretty well. I thought the power was about average for the paddles that I play with, and for a non-thermoform paddle, uh, I thought it was pretty good. It's not a rocket by any means, but I felt like the power was pretty proportional to how hard I swung, which may sound intuitive, but if you played with thermoform paddles, you'll know that there's a decent amount of elastic effect, so to speak, on the market out there right now. But I thought the power and the touch that I got from Monger was pretty consistent, and I can move the ball well. For spin, again, I think we're talking in terms of good performance, but not outstanding and not poor. I thought it was certainly adequate and noticeable on serves and drives especially. It wasn't like I was throwing curveballs out there, but I felt and saw the ball dip when I'd hit well. I think you're going to like this paddle if you're a beginner looking to level up into that intermediate or like low advanced level range. If you're looking to get your first carbon fiber paddle and you don't want to break the bank, or you just want a good, dependable, not $200 or $300 paddle. Now, if you're looking for a paddle that's going to be seen on the Pro Tour a lot, you want something that's going to compete with the most high-tech, you know, thermal form, poppy spinny paddles out there, that's not the MO for Monger Pickleball. 
Um, the goal here really, to my understanding, is to have created a paddle that's cost effective and that good and average players can see like improvement of their game and then get into, you know, quality market without spending a ton of money. In summary, I think the Monger paddle fills a good hole in the marketplace right now where you can get a good quality paddle for a decent price. It's not too expensive or crappy. Um, I personally would feel pretty good giving this like as a gift to a friend or a family member. And I want them to have something nice, but I don't want to spend a ton of money. And like always, if you've had a chance to play with this paddle, let me know what you think. Let me know the things you liked or didn't like about the review and what you want to see more of.